A WWE trainee has been arrested and charged with battery. Plus, top AEW faction split on Dynamite last night. And Vince McMahon got a Dynamite name drop as well. It's all in the wrestling news right now. We talked last month about the story of Albert James Ferrari. He is the WWE Next in Line trainee that was facing charges of assault of an indecent nature. We can update you this morning after Channel 6 News reported that an arrest warrant was issued for Albert James Ferrari uh, for the charges of battery of an indecent nature. Uh, the Payne County District Court processed the charge of Ferrari's uh, of Ferrari's assault, and the bond was set at twenty five thousand uh, dollars. This is after an unnamed woman accused Ferrari of the crime last month. Uh, we can confirm uh, just a f in the early hours of this morning, Albert James Ferrari was arrested and checked into the Payne County Sheriff's Office. So, obviously, a, a grim and grisly story where there may be more still to come wanted to keep you up to date with it and we'll let you know more at cultaholic.com let's move on to dynamite last night oh, shall we it was a stacked show mm. Tom. it was very stacked very good as well we said goodbye to two factions from dynamite now mm. aew has been sort of the home of factions for a long time for so a see long time two of them sort of shut down in quick order yeah definitely so uh, let's go with the i guess maybe the smallest one first perhaps how dare you say that i know peter sinertia will be living they are probably the biggest one and um, so after <laughs> After Powerhouse Hobbs attacked Ricky Starks on last week's Dynamite, if you remember, Starks um, put his FTW Championship up against Danhausen, lost it, and then was like, let's keep the open challenge rolling. Hook came in and then took the belt off him. Um, but last night, before uh, Hobbs had his match, Taz declared on commentary that Team Taz is no more, and he wished all the best to Hobbs. Hobbs, Starks, and Hook going, going forward in the future as well. Um, mm. So that is it. That's seemingly Team Taz done. Um, oh, I, like part of me is like, well, as a as a whole faction, I guess perhaps they weren't doing too much together. Obviously, Hobbs and Starks were tag teaming. Um, but like with Hook in the mix of that as well, they never did something that was all three of them or all four of them if you include taz as well all of them together too much um which felt maybe like a bit of a wasted opportunity however now i guess with starks being as hot as he is i think it's time for him to break off and go and do his own thing like have a nice singles run i'm sure hook is going to do some fantastic stuff oh, as well it's going to be just fine as well as hobbs too so um i'm excited to see what happens for all three of these really promising really promising stars we'll have, we'll have some decent matches between hobbs and Starks. Obviously, yeah. that's the obviously the the, the, dis, the dissolving of Team Taz mm -hmm. comes after Starks went. I lost my belt, but I've still got my mate Hobbs. Boom! Oof. No, you haven't. And that's kind of what led to where we are yes. today. Uh, but they weren't the only faction to split last night, were they, Andrew? <sighs> they certainly weren't. Tom Campbell, baby. Uh, the undisputed elite has finally gone kaboom. Um, mm -hmm. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish turned on the Young Bucks, and not in a way that you might be thinking tom all right so cole he came out to the ring it was lovely they all came back huge pop for adam cole um, and just the undisputed elite in general being back on tv so cole said that he came to aw out of loyalty to the young bucks and is saying if the young bucks weren't going to team with bobby fish and um obviously with uh, adam cole not being clear to compete yet and also kyle o'reilly not being clear to compete yet if the young bucks weren't going to team with bobby fish then like they don't want to have anything. They don't mm. want to have anything to do with them because obviously we got the trios championship tournament coming up too. And if they weren't going to team with Bobby Fish, then, then you're then, not then, going to compete at all. Yeah, that was Adam Cole's wording. It's like yeah. if, you're, if you're not going to team with Bobby Fish, then you're not competing at all. Mm. Now I don't mean you're not going to be allowed. Like you physically, you physically won't be yeah, able you just to. can't do it. And Puff. then we get the attack with Bobby Fish putting the rear naked choke in, and then uh, uh, sorry, Kylo O'Reilly chopping the leg, and then it looked as though um, they were going to. Re Really do some damage to Matt Jackson. Yeah, the neck pillmanizing. Uh, all the, the pillmanizing, yeah, got the chair Pillman out. Pillman was the leg. Thing. The oh, was the neck. I the just guillotine. want to clear that up for yeah, people. Yeah, the guillotine. I know people take stuff I say quite literally, so I want to make sure that I clear that bit up. And it was so wonderful to see, as for a long time now, we've sort of been teasing a reunion between the Young Bucks and Adam Page. We've seen it on Being the Elite last week as well. We saw it a little bit with the Bucks sort of approaching Page backstage 
being like, look, we we want to talk to you, but then the Dark Order came in and were like, happy birthday, Adam Page. And then <laughs> nothing really got said there. So Page runs in to make the save and uh, helps Matt back up to his feet. And it's a lovely little reunion there. So yeah, this is going to be really exciting because mm. these two factions, these two trios together facing off is going to be one hell of a feud. Do we feel like this is something that can happen during the tournament? Because I know obviously Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly are medically cleared yet. Yeah. So, but do we think that we might reach a point where they are in time for a big crescendo in the tournament? I think the so. Titles? I think so. We've still got a little bit of time left yet before mm. All Out. Um, and I can see things playing out as the month goes on. I'm sure they will be medically cleared, hopefully very soon. Mm. Um, I, I mean... I feel like there's no other way to have a big blower for these titles that have just been introduced. I think that is the perfect way to kick them off and make them feel like a big deal as well. I feel like that's something you could potentially main event all out with. Yeah. If you get to a point where maybe, like, I don't think CM Punk will be, if CM Punk's not back for all out and you want like a big match to mm. headline the show and a big way to set up the AEW trios titles, yeah. put that match on last, give them 45 minutes. I mean, they've all got star power, yeah. you know, like huge name value. So that would be that would be pretty cool. Actually. I'd be fine with that being main event. Mm. I would ha I'd be a happy boy if those six <laughs> clattered each other in the main event. Uh, or looking ahead, uh, not so much to All Out, uh, but to Battle of the Belts two. This is going to be taped uh, around at the same time they do Rampage tomorrow, and then aired on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Battle of the Belts three. Thunder Rosa is going to be defending the women's title against Jamie Hater. This is after some mm. malfunctions at the junctions uh, in a tag match last night with Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa versus Jamie Hater and Britt Baker. It's sort of spilled out to where we are now. Yes, I'm excited to see this one because I think Jamie Hater is amazing. Yes. And obviously Thunder Rosa is incredible as well. I don't think we need to tell people that, but Jamie Hater is just like something else, just a powerhouse and it's Oh, God, I can't wait to see some backbreakers kicking off, Tom. Jay Lethal and his lads were going to attack Orange Cassidy. Wardlow stopped that, and mm -hmm. it's led to Wardlow versus Lethal at Battle of the Belt 3 for the TNT title. Yeah, yeah that's going to be, be a good thing. as well. And it joins the, the car that also features Claudio versus Takeshita. My boy, my boy Takeshita. I'm so excited for this one. Uh, to, I'm like, uh, part of me really wants Takeshita to get an AW contract because everybody loves him so much much mm. and i think he's just been showing nothing but like a hundred percent in every single match that he puts on he's so good and i think a lot of people are starting to realize that and recognize that now too and i think that's largely in part to AEW. uh so just sign him please keep him forever keep him it feels like he's done everything in ddt it feels like he's done everything. Bring him over. Come we want over. him. I want him. Come on over, baby. Uh, we're also looking ahead to Quake at the Lake, uh, which is happening August the 10th. Is that next week? That's next week, yeah. Oh, One day how? after my birth. Oh, that's, that's what it says here. It does. Mm, Darby Allen and Brody King are going to be celebrating Andrew getting one year older with a coffin match. Oh, that's all I've <laughs> ever wanted. Don't, don't worry, I'm closer to the coffin than you. No, I wouldn't stress that. on it. Don't say that. Um, Darby and Brody have had themselves a feud that's seen them scrapping in real life settings. Brody King yeah. attacking Alan at an autograph signing, attacking Alan at the Comic Con. Which was really cool. And obviously, I think last week as well, uh, Brody cut a promo referencing the tattoo on. Um, uh, Darby Allen's chest. There we go. We'll get there eventually. Uh, which is about like, it's not over until you're in the ground or whatever it is on his chest. So that to me sort of insinuated that a coffee match was on the cards at some point and then now it's actually official. One of them might be in the ground. Uh, also mm. for Quake at the Lake, Jake Cargill puts on a TBS title open challenge mm. and the Lucha Brothers and Andrade and Roosh are having a tornado tag. Oh, that's going to be good. That is going to be very, we've been leading to this for a long time now. So I'm excited that this is actually happening. That happening as well as uh, Jericho challenging for the interim AEW <sighs> title. God damn it. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be Yuta so much because oh. obviously there was Jericho and Yuta. Yuta girded Jericho into a match to put his, uh, to put his, um, what would the word be? Title to shot. His title, yeah, title I guess shot. That he would, to put his title shot on, up on the line and Jericho, Healy boy, kicked Yuta in the nuts and just disgusting behavior. So Chris Jericho and Moxley, I do still be okay though, still be mm. good, maybe, yeah. So all that setting setting up on Dynamite, also on Dynamite last night, we, we hear you, Max Caster. We 
we hear you <laughs> mentioning the, the former chairman of the board on oh. AEW television. Oh, Vince McMahon getting a name drop in the acclaimed dumpster match words of rhyme. He did, Tom. Yo, yo. yo. Listen, no filter. I ain't Instagram. We make the ass boys retire like Vince McMahon. Oh, he oh. said Vince McMahon on oh. a show that isn't Vince McMahon's we got show. Him. We got him. Oh, no. That seems to what be a happen? running thing in uh, Max Caster's raps, but they get a pop from the crowd. Yeah. What more can you ask for, you know? I see you. Hey, speaking of the dumpster match, uh, Road Dog was tweeting about it going, hey, it's a dumpster match. If only there were a couple of people that have experienced that who could comment on it. I wonder who. Uh, maybe him, maybe. Do you think? Uh, this comes after BG James quite openly said that he begged Tony Khan for a job. <laughs> and also, you know, we've heard as well, I think me and Ross uh, reported on it last week that he's just been, uh, he's been blatantly just been going, Tony, some of this is absolutely pants, pal. <laughs> uh, you know, rather give us than- Give a job. Yeah, 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 give us a job, exactly. Maybe, you know, I, and as we were saying, sometimes it is good to sort of be forward and uh, put criticisms um, ahead and sort of address them as they are, but maybe sort of just, you there's know, a way that you do there, it. Exactly, yeah. right? There's, there's, a, there's a way that you present yourself and there's a way that you do it that's a, a little bit more proper than basically just like, just just putting dirt on the product and then mm. we're going, going like, can I have a job, please? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, yeah, I remember the time I had a, me- a private message coming through from somebody saying, you're rubbish at what you do. I hate what you do. You cringe. I could do what you do and I could do it much better. Mm. And I'll say, I'll tell you what, we haven't heard a peep out of Owen Morrison Ooh. ever since. So... <laughs> Long may that remain. Come boy. There was another nice tribute last night on Dynamite. I do want to mention this. Uh, Justin Roberts paid tribute to the journalist and photographer Blackjack Brown. We lost Blackjack Brown last weekend. And Justin Roberts, if you saw, was wearing a black glove mm-hmm. at one point. And, uh, and that's a little tribute to Blackjack Brown because he, he credits Blackjack Brown for uh, getting him into, getting him to fall in love with wrestling. Like they, they spoke many occasions. They sort of wrote to each other. And Blackjack Brown as a legendary photographer would send photos from WCW shows to Justin Roberts and and he, he put out a lovely message on Facebook on, on Instagram sorry all about him saying if you knew Blackjack you get it and you're also a better person for it I wanted mm. to give some nod to that because that's a really classy way mm. uh, that David Blackjack Brown was honoured by Justin Roberts on Dynamite last night I thought it was really really nice yeah that's really good stuff. we'll have more wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com Keys, keys. love you bye